From KPU News in Austin, you're watching Texas This Week with Ashley Goodo. Good Sunday morning. Problems with the Texas foster care system that have plagued the state for more than a decade persist. And now a judge's order against the state is at the center of a legal fight. More on that in just a minute. But first, let's get to the three things you need to know in Texas politics. Federal, state and local politicians celebrated a historic investment in Taylor, Texas this week. On Monday, the Biden administration announced plans to give Samsung up to $6.4 billion to expand computer chip manufacturing in Central Texas as part of the CHIPS Act. And leaders of the tech companies say they plan to invest a total of $45 billion in our area, creating upwards of 20,000 jobs. A federal appeals court is stopping Texas from enforcing Forcing a new law that would require booksellers to rate books for sexual content before selling them to schools. Booksellers, including book people in Austin, sued the state, saying the law violates their free speech rights and is logistically impossible to comply with. The court agreed, saying the law would compel booksellers' speech, forcing them to support a certain viewpoint. Russian hackers targeted a small Texas town. According to CNN, a U.S. cybersecurity firm reported a cyber attack caused a water tank in Muleshoe to overflow back in January. Muleshoe is in the Texas Panhandle, about 70 miles northwest of Lubbock. The report says a hacking group with ties to the Russian government is suspected of the attack. Muleshoe city manager told CNN hackers were able to interact with the water tank by breaking into a remote login system. City officials later replaced that software. On Monday, the state of Texas was found to be in contempt of a federal judge's court orders for the third time over the foster care system. The judge issued a hefty fine on the Commissioner of Texas Health and Human Services $100,000 a day until the agency complies with her orders. An appeals court temporarily blocked that order. So what's the latest problems plaguing Texas foster care? Karen Brooks Harper, Health and Human Services reporter for the Texas Tribune, joined me to explain. The Texas foster care system has really been plagued with issues for well over a decade right leading mm -hmm. to a lawsuit in 2011 and you know just all this all this legislative action all of these you know things that they've been trying to do a lot of turnover talk to us about some of the issues within the department itself well they've been under this lawsuit alone for almost 13 years that was filed on behalf of you know the children that are in their permanent state care so you know it, it comes from years of complaints regarding everything from whether they've been medicated properly to if they are, they're in, in the most current case, their um, allegations of abuse and, and, uh, and neglect within the system are substantiated or investigated. Um, and there are, there are uh, over staffing issues, I mean, under staffing issues, they have um, a huge turnover. There's just, there are, uh, there, there's a, 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 a magnitude of problems that have been identified there that have led a federal judge to declare it unsafe for children. Um, and this is where the, the foster kids, this is where children are placed when they're removed from their homes. So it's a very vulnerable population. Right, and you think about going from one bad situation to potentially another bad situation. I think so many people are familiar with children having to stay in office buildings or being put up in hotels and things of that nature, right? That's right. There's uh, There are children who, if they don't have an immediate placement, a place to go, which is quite a few of them, especially early on in their after they've been removed from their homes, um, they end up sleeping in hotels. They end up sleeping in in uh, in, in rental houses that are um, are are you know chaotic and and uh, according to reports and 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 things like that. So it's a it's a very difficult situation um, for the state to get its arms around and and for the children to you know to go into in a lot of a lot of ways. You know. Yeah, there was a hearing earlier this week, and. For the third time, Texas was found to be in contempt of the court orders to fix the foster care system. Talk to us about what happened during that latest hearing. So what's going on now is the a federal judge, Janice Jack, in, um, in Corpus Christi has, has several times ruled that the state uh, has not um, timely and appropriately responded to her orders to fix the system, which is, there's, there's you know, dozens of remedial orders she's issued over the years and, and what those are is just instructions on what you should do to you know to fix certain problems like staffing or like investigations or 
or, you know, oversight of, of psychotropic medications or, you know, conditions inside some of these rental homes these kids live in. So there's been a, a rash of these over the years. Um, and so what she told them to do in the last couple months was show signs that they had or evidence that they had started addressing these. They have done a lot of that. Um, and then there's a but there's a couple of sticking points for her. And w what has happened this week, in fact, was the uh, the first thing is that the uh, Health and Human Services Commissioner Cecily Young, who is in charge of the uh, the agency that oversees a part of this foster care system, um, was fined as being in contempt of court. Uh, the fine is going to be a hundred thousand dollars a day until they um, until they fix the problems. Um, that's been stayed. We'll get to that in a second. But um, but the result of that is, I mean, that's been the result of the state the state's inaction, according to the judge, on investigations into accusations of uh, abuse, neglect, um, exploitation by children who are foster care uh, in foster care who have intellectual disabilities and developmental disabilities. So we're talking about investigations uh, that lagged for almost a couple of years uh, in one particular case of a child with you know, a, an intellectual disability who had been um, uh, accusing um, her caretakers of, um, of abuse. You know, there was a 14-year-old girl who was um, kind of operating at, at the uh, level of a two or uh, three or four-year-old who um, was tased, she was beaten, she had attempted suicide, she wound up with a broken jaw, and she was left in that placement during the investigation into all those allegations for, um, for months and months. Um, I want to say maybe a year. Um, so these, these areas, specifically these investigations, this, this narrow area, because um, it's only one part of, of the complaints that they've had over the years, according to the judge, did, the, the state did not respond quickly enough to them. So she has now um, issued, a, a, found them in contempt. What's happening currently, and which will be the case for the next you know, week or so at least, um, is that the, a, a court of appeals has temporarily blocked that order. Right. Well, we'll, get to, we'll get to more on that in, in yeah. just a minute. Before we go there, I want to ask you, what is the state saying in its defense? I, I mean, what has the state said to, to say, well, this is why we can't seem to fix these problems, or this, we are trying, or what is the state saying? The state is saying that, it is pointing out that they have managed to, and acknowledged by the judge, met a number of those recommendations over the years, Re recommended remedial orders, you know, there's a, there's a, many levels of this instruction right. she's given them. And they have, they have spent, you know, I, I think one of the figures I, I, I read was $100 million on, on just one of these problems, trying to fix it over the years. They have, um, they have come up with solutions for their staffing, their um, re, uh, revamping or, or looking at how to revamp their, you know, their placements for children who have nowhere, who have nowhere to go, which really means hotels and, and, and apartments and, and these kind of things. And so, their argument and their appeal that they filed this week, which is you know directly after this this contempt order, was that they have made a good faith effort to uh, comply with most of the orders, and um, and Jack apparently didn't think that was good enough because she denied their appeal. I mean their request for a, um, a delay and. Uh, and was prepared to let them start racking up those fines, which, if you do the math, is like three million dollars a month. So, um, so that's this, the state is, is is basically saying that they've made a good faith effort and that that's been ignored. If you've kept up with the proceedings at all, or stuck your nose into one of them for five minutes, you will see that there is no love lost between Judge Janice Jack and the Texas Department of Health and Human Services and the Texas Department of Family uh, and Protective Services, which was not subject to this contempt order, but there's this problem, there's this coming. <laughs> they're, right. they're still under a lot of scrutiny, so uh, they haven't gotten off scot-free yet. Th there's, there's still much more of this case to, to go. So back to that hefty fine. Again, it's on hold for now. The appeals court is giving the state and federal judge until this upcoming week to submit their responses, but there's no set timeline on when the court will make a decision. That's Texas This Week.